Hello. Um, we rolling, right? Yay, cool. So this, what you're looking at, is pretty much the holy grail of Marshall guitar amplifiers. It's a 1967 Plexi 50 watt. It's a bass version. Um, but as they found out very quickly in the 60s, once you turn it past five, like the difference between the guitar amps and the bass amps, it doesn't matter. A lot of players actually chose the bass amps. Uh, uh, one in particular was Richie Blackmore. The other guy who used to love uh, the bass variants of Marshall's was Paul Kossoff of the band Free. It works with a valve rectifier, which gives it what's known in the blues parlance as a bit of sag. It's just slightly more compression, like a spongier compression when you play. Um, your attack isn't as direct. When you're digging in, it kind of goes and then does its, does its note and really pushes it out. Um, it, this is a very close cousin to the, to the Marshall Blues Breaker amps and the first JTMs, which have basically Fender basements. This amp is like blues heaven, literally is. It, you plug, I mean, this, this Les Paul that I'm playing is a fairly high output Les Paul. Um, I'll do some demonstrations just on the neck pickup, just doing that sustainy, whaley blue stuff. And it's just, it's that sound, man. It's that sound from the 60s that we all love. Um, and yeah, it's also like just fucking loud. It's, it's so loud. Um, it's worth mentioning at this point, I didn't say anything about it in the NARB demo, but um, the cab that we're using is a, it's actually quite a cool cab, to be honest. It's a very cool cab. Um, it's had some beer spilled in it, which is always good. It means it's done its fair share of rocking out. It's a reissue, I'm not sure what year reissue, but it's a reissue Jimi Hendrix uh, slanted Marshall cab, 4x12, but it's got the, the, the cream of the crop for Celestian Greenback, slightly underpowered speakers, which you want in an old Marshall because then the amp's pushing the speakers and the speakers are breaking up a little bit and you're just having that symbiosis where the amp and the speakers are in perfect harmony with one another. I think that's enough talking. Let's, uh, let's make that sound, shall we? Some lovely out of tune blues indeed. But yeah, so they, I, I cannot stress to you how loud this thing is. Like it's, it's nice, it is nice though. Like when you're standing in front of one of them and you can feel the breeze ruffling your shirt, it's lacquer, like it feels good. Um, I'm just trying to think how do you, how to go through this amp the best. Basically, I just want to turn it flat out and play it for the rest of the day, but like we'll all have bleeding ears. So I'm gonna take you through sort of clean sounds and we all, sorry, the, EQs and everything is set down the middle. I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is this is great. This is a wonderful chair. We're not even talking about the manipulation in the guitar control as much. I'm just keeping everything pretty much flat out um, to give you an idea of what the amp's capable of, which is all of it basically. So clean sound on the Marshall. <laughs> It's beautiful. Ah, man, 
That, I mean, that, that to me is just like a picture perfect, crystal clear. Well, it's not clear sound wise, but that's a beautiful clean tone. Man, that's just delicious. I could live in clean tone land on this amp all day. Yeah, okay, cool. We'll move on. Um, <laughs> okay, let's take it up to rock and roll land. if you got the effect of that but that is like being punched it's <laughs> like yeah sure yeah can i have this as a thank you present when we're done <laughs> <laughs> no that it's uh, it's quite something I, I like i'm gonna be honest if you if you ever get a chance to play one of these amps as, as a guitar player um you'll have read about them we all know the legend of marshall like 60s marshalls they're they really are some of the most desirable amps in the world. Um, and I know why. I know why, because they, it gives it, I've never had a feeling like this off an amp before, and I've, I've played a couple of really nice amps. But there's just something about the way this responds to everything I'm doing and the sound it's giving, it's just, oof. Yeah, anyway, let's make it louder. It's not just me, right? That is, no, that is just an 11 on the top. Like... demonstrated there was how much bass this amp has um, which is a retarded amount but it is a bass amp so we'll forgive it that was now set at about halfway uh, between the two channels what I what I'm finding I'm tending to do with this amp just to try and compensate for the bass is using the two volume channels which we've got bridged um, trying to get a little more treble uh, out of out of out of the amp by when I say I'm halfway I've got the bass channel or the darker channel um, backed off slightly from halfway and I've got the bright channel or the lead channel slightly over halfway and I'm still getting all the bass in the world. Um, it is a bass amp. It was designed as a bass amp. Luckily Jim Marshall believed in the EQ as well. Um, so we can we can do something about that. But we're gonna we're gonna carry on moving through the amp now. Now we're gonna get into into sort of cream sort of territory. Um, and then we'll then we'll do the the Hendrix bit um, without a strap. <laughs>
my guitar is completely out of tune, which is possible because I forgot to tune it after putting a new string on. It's not. So the bass frequency was so intense there that it actually changed the pitch of the low notes. Um, cool. Never heard that before. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna we're gonna take it up full out and just go a little crazy. It's not high gain, it's not saturated, um, play the fastest guitar in the world uh, gain amounts, um, but it is an unbelievable amount of power. The amps now are operating at a really happy place, it's cool, we, like, we're getting a lot in, we're pushing a lot out into the right cabinet where the speakers are slightly underpowered, so they're also going like, oh, this is a bit hectic, but sure. Um, and it combines to make that sound that just really, it's just present, it's just there. You can't argue with that noise. Um, yeah, you can understand how, how you know, you could, you could mic up a couple of these and, and play to 500,000 people at Woodstock in, in, in 1969. You know, you can understand why Ingrid Malmsteen has 24 of these on stage behind him because you really do feel like, a, like an elemental force. I hope you've enjoyed, I hope you've enjoyed today. I've had, <coughs> it's such a good time. I can't even speak. No, it's been fucking awesome. My ears are shot. I don't know how you guys were thought. Yeah, everyone's buggered. Um, but it's been a blast. Come check out Gear Junkie, Kiffer Shop in the world. Um, thanks a million guys. Have a cool day. My name's Jono and we will see you next time. Cheers. Woo!